everybody, and welcome to the 10th and final episode of the Breaking Bad Rewatch Podcast. I am Simeon Jimmy, and if you only listen to this show, you've never actually watched Breaking Bad, and you're dying to know what happened to Jesse Pinkman, luckily this film gives us plenty of answers. Uh, I'm also joined by Florian Himsel. Hey everybody, ready to watch Breaking Bad without any of the interesting characters? <laughs> hey, Fat Todd is there. It's interesting how he gains a bunch of weight and then loses <laughs> it for other scenes and then gains it back, you know, back and forth. It's a lot of rapid weight growth and weight loss. Well, I definitely like Todd, yeah, but anyone else, Jesus. <laughs> We've also got the mother of the Mexican maid who died in the film. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the sun. <laughs> Hardsy proxy. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm chilling and willing as always. Now, when you found out that your mom opened up an encyclopedia with 15 grand in it and was killed, were you upset? No, I was more upset about the fact that I didn't get any of that money. Fair. Yeah, you should have checked the fridge. Yeah. And last but not least, the one and only, Kuehl Babino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I a thin Huel or a fat Huel? You can be whatever Huel you want to be. I mean, in this world, people well, gain and lose weight Huel. randomly, it seems. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, you lose all of your power if you become thin Huel, though. It wouldn't work out. So this is the El Camino movie. It's supposed to be the official sequel to Breaking Bad. Came out around, I think, season three or four of Better Call Saul. Is that right, Hartsey? Yeah, came out in between the way of season four and five. Basically, Vince Gilligan said, Better Call Saul, this shit's gay. I don't like it anymore. I'm going to go make my Jesse movie and, and give Better Call Saul to Peter Gould. And that's why that show is pure Kino. Uh, Erich, is this film directed and written by Vince Gilligan pure Kino? Uh, no, I don't think it is Kino. And like, what's funny about this movie is that I wanted it so bad. Because I thought the, the finale of Breaking Bad, and especially that last season, really uh, skimped on the Jesse. It really just kind of like threw Jesse into the employ of the meth Nazis, and he's kind of just a tortured prisoner the whole time. And when he drives away, it's like, okay, but what the fuck? That, that doesn't answer any fucking question. About uh, he got his freedom, E. Rich. Uh, we don't, don't we don't all need a history lesson on the reconstruction period of the south okay the slaves were freed <laughs> and that's the end of the story oh yeah, yeah racism yeah, was cured thought, basically yeah i love how they just have Jesse driving away at the end and then they made another movie and then he's still driving away at the end <laughs> and we haven't learned anything else hey he made it north about 2500 miles or something so that's progress y you know what that that fucking vacuum repair guy, you know, like you, you drive him all the way, you give him all the documents and you couldn't have done that for $2,000 less. All you had to do was like give him less gas money or whatever. Like I'm sure you could have offered some kind of service that isn't the whole package. What you're saying is you're glad Robert Forrester died before the film came out. <laughs> Did he? Is that the actor's out? name? Yes, yeah, yeah. Robert Rip in peace. It Speaking is. of which, we should mention uh, T.O. recently passed away. Uh, Mark Margolis, one of the, the greatest actors on Breaking Bad. Just yeah. an incredible presence, an incredible just like, you know exactly who he is as soon as you look at him. The, the most great. iconic facial acting, perhaps of all time, like just all of his facial expressions are so uh, expressive and beautiful. So he played yeah. the young version of himself too, after having played oh, the yeah. old version? Oh yeah. Well, that's it wouldn't be Breaking Bad universe if they weren't doing that shit all the fucking time. And if it was so so good though, he he looked really good in in all his scenes. Damn, especially when he was shitting himself. I thought that was his most beautiful <laughs> scene. So rest in peace. Yeah, I know. And to go from that to to being like like a, a regular guy who can walk around and everything, it's pretty pretty. Amazing. He has he has incredible range as an actor. Sometimes he can sit. Sometimes he can walk. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying? Well, I'm impressed, okay? <laughs> As a man who sits all day, Florian is impressed. Well, I'm impressed that they that they took this character <clears throat> and they, they apparently used the best actor ever for him, even though he, he didn't have any really impressive roles until Better Call Saul. It's, oh, it's how crazy. dare you? What about, uh, insert movies and TV shows in post? How, how, what about those, <laughs> Florian? <laughs> I meant in Breaking Bad, he's just sitting hmm. there, okay? 
But I mean, of, of course, it was great how he how he shat himself. Obviously, <laughs> the best. So Breaking Bad is famous for I mean, it's attention to detail. And I want to point out they completely fucked this movie up right off the bat. If you do a side-by-side -side comparison of Jesse driving away in the Breaking Bad finale and then they recreate the scene for this movie, his beard is completely different. It's much thicker and longer now. Like, come on, Vince, you couldn't just fuck, like, are you fucking pulling uh, uh, many saints of Newark here? You didn't even watch your own fucking shit before you made a movie out of it? Just make the beard look the same! How hard would it be? Yeah, that's in, that's incredibly awkward. I, did, did he even have a beard? Oh my god! What the oh fuck movie beard. did you watch, Florian? No, Jesus! I, I mean, have a beard in the original. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, he was okay. a prisoner for months. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> and I like how I think. So I, I, go I, ahead, Erich. Aaron, Aaron Paul's face as a concern in Breaking Bad is just so weird. Because I feel like he's super skinny looking when he first starts out in, in Breaking Bad. And then as as he goes along, he kind of like gets more like heft to his face. And somehow he looks wrong, especially in this movie as Jesse. I, j I just don't know what it is, but... It just becomes too round. <laughs> uh, he's like literally 15 years older, I think. Well, uh, I think maybe 10 years I think it's far more passable for this movie than it was for like the Bear Call of Saul flashbacks because like he's somehow he looked better in those to me. Somehow he looked <laughs> more like original Jesse in those. I I don't know how to explain it. No, it's I very think odd. Completely opposite. I think he looked awful in those uh in those back flashes, as Floyd would say. Yep, that's back what flashes. I say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we get a bunch of little pieces of lore about what the world is like in a post-Heisenberg world, and we do mm -hmm. see the restaurant for Los Pollos Hermanos. Uh, the sign has been replaced to now be a restaurant called Twisters. And I'm wondering, uh, what, just because uh, your general manager and owner is a meth kingpin who gets exploded by a pooping man, uh, you have to, like, lose the business? Are you telling me Lyle couldn't have taken over? Yeah, I, I don't quite think that they would trade on the, the name recognition of Los Pollos Hermanos so easily. <laughs> uh, so well, I, if if anything, it's going to sell more than ever. Like, oh, this is the most addictive chicken. Mm -hmm. There's probably meth in the batter. Yeah, you mm -hmm. think? I if mean, I, I found out that the owner of Burger King was a meth kingpin, I'd start going to Burger King every day. Give me <laughs> those fucking like chicken it, fries. I feel like in the real world, you would still change the name, but I guess, like, why? I guess it doesn't really make sense, because I guess it would technically sell more chicken, right? Is or Twister's not the name of the actual restaurant? Yeah, it is. It's the actual name. Uh, so it's oh, a lay epic uh, Easter egg or something? I guess so. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that that was the same restaurant. Uh, not everybody's playing ball frog while watching the film. I was actually <laughs> looking at the screen. Well, I was only seeing this movie for the second time, and I, I'm, I, I was looking forward to it. Finally, oh, I it's been so long. I didn't like it back then, but maybe now. And uh, I, I guess it, it's probably mediocre, right? Yeah, this what, is what the most yeah. mediocre movie I've seen five times. <laughs> like, I, I think I'll never watch this <laughs> I feel again. Bad for you. Why I've do I keep watching enough. this? <laughs> I've seen it twice, and that's enough for me. I don't think I'm ever going to revisit this, to be honest. Well, let's dive yeah. into it, and Florin, I want to pick your brain. Let's hear why is this film mediocre? Well, I mean, most of all, it doesn't have enough to do with Breaking Bad, and all it does is, like, shoehorn in, like, references to Breaking Bad without, like, telling us anything interesting that happened. And it, it's just a stupid revenge movie, and I usually don't like those. It's just like, oh, I had a bad time, now people must die. But it... <laughs> I, I don't know, does, does it even work for you guys? Does, is Jesse even, like, convincing as a guy who's out for revenge? <laughs> Did you say, I had a bad time, now people must die? Like, <laughs> like the guy who fastened, like, the welding mechanics of him being a slave, like, that's not justification for killing him? Well, I mean, yeah, that, that may be sad justification but chess is only doing it because the vacuum repair guys fleecing him for two thousand bucks you know so right hey, Je really jesse don't want no work. trouble he's classic jackie chan but this robert forrester <laughs> motherfucker is being a stingy yeah. bastard and what's double pay i mean revenge isn't even yeah i was gonna motivation. say didn't they already pay him in the first place 
I, I, evidently, oh, I he didn't get the original right. payment, but he didn't uh, even go through okay. with the job. He just drove his yeah, fucking van. Right. Was, yeah. Stupid. Uh, Fuck you, Vince. Why would you even write it like this? <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, he specifically has the rule that he will not pick up anyone who stands him up. You know, so it makes sense that he would be harsh on that. But like, so he's breaking parts. his own rule just to make more money. What a bastard. Yeah, I mean, Walt would never do that. <laughs> Fucking Walt. I can't believe they, they put that scene in where Walt tells him, Oh man, you're so lucky. I had to wait my entire life to do something special. And the special thing he did was a, a meth empire. And Well, as the, t- as the man on the news uh, says, it's the biggest meth empire in American history. So that's pretty special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, he... Do you guys think it would really be the biggest myth? And like, also, he yes. kind of just glommed yes, himself on to a previously running operation. So I, well, I don't know. Made, that he made way more money well. afterwards, I guess, or at least the same yeah, amount. That's quite true. Yeah, during but the also, it's like also Paulus Hermanus wouldn't have made that much money without his formula. You know, and he's already built the brand. His beforehand. chicken formula. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Vomino's I Pest, I think, made more money than Gus ever did, right? A- am I wrong? Wait, really? It would have oh. to if that's what they said on the news. The news media would not lie, oh E. Rich. God. That's well, insane. They would just love to the how long has... together. They, they probably how just think... Is... Like, what do they know? They probably don't even know if, if Gus was, in fact, responsible or if it was all oh, wait, Heisenberg. What, was know? the Vomino's Pest, was that when they were selling to, uh, what is it? Declan. Netherlands or whatever. Yeah, Declan in the Netherlands and all that, yeah. I okay, all right. I guess that makes sense. But like, yeah. but you said Marvelous like in the company, U.S., yeah. were, were they counting all those other sales? We're gonna have to ask Vince himself on that one. <laughs> yeah, I need I need really to break important. down the uh, the actual numbers here with Vince. Well, if we're just skipping Vince around the movie, the should we dissect this flashback with Jesse and Heisenberg? It's right after I believe the four days out episode where they're trapped in the desert, and I guess on the way home yeah. they stopped at this uh, diner uh, slash hotel. Mm. And I like that uh, Jesse's, uh, he set the AC in his room to 59 degrees, like the lowest it can possibly go. And I felt seen, because when I have a hotel room, I do the exact (laughs) same thing. Basically, same, yeah. (laughs) Wow. I have no reference. (laughs) We we don't have AC. You've never been in a hotel? Jesus. No, they don't have air conditioning in fucking Austria! Yeah, we don't need it. We're a temperate country. Uh, Florian's been bitching my DMs about how hot it is the last month. (laughs) I haven't. What? I'll put that shit on screen, motherfucker. It happened. I hardly even DM you. If anything, it's in one of the groups. Rude. (laughs) Uh, Hartsy, how did you feel to see a spiritual sequel to your favorite episode, Four Days Out? Oh, I was, I'm very happy that uh, it takes place after my favorite episode of all time. But, like, also, it's kind of absurd that they introduce time travel as a concept all of a sudden at the end of this movie. Like, come on. I guess we were doing it to set up the time travel concept in Bear Call Saul, though. Yeah, exactly. And I did erase you on on Twitter with that very same idea. (laughs) Yep. Uh, right, during you this went scene, crazy on on Twitter as well with your with your shrimp tweet. Uh, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> I, I, I was not expecting twenty thousand likes in a day for saying that shrimp are different than bugs. Yeah, it was a pretty silly meme that was. Shrimp is there. bugs. No, Sh- fuck you, E. Rich. <laughs> Find <laughs> one bug like. that you'd eat over lobster, you motherfucker. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know, it depends on what you, how you deep fry it. <laughs> I don't think so. there's no meat in a bug, dude. But we're not talking about no, that. I, I've, I've crushed a couple meaty bugs in my. I life. bet you have, you fucking <laughs> Timon and Pumbaa ass bitch. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but slimy but satisfying. L- let me ask you guys this: Do we agree with this writing of the characters? Walt asks Jesse, "If you went to college, what would you study?" And Jesse says he wants mm-hmm. to study sports, sports medicine, medicine. Yeah. not woodworking, not even business. Like no, Walt look, is insinuating. Look, look, look. I- I've been in schools. Sports medicine seems to be one of those things fucking kids that like go towards is like, oh yeah, that's like a real thing. Like they want to be athletes, but they know that they can't actually be an athlete. So they want to be around athletes. 
So like sports medicine is one of the things that they like go to. It's it's hilarious. I mean, at this point, Jesse's like 27, 28. It's too late to be an athlete. And since when does mm-hmm. he care about sports? Has this ever been brought up in the entirety of the show? No, not that I, I mean, believe. You'd still have to be like an actual doctor. So it, like, uh, no, I, I don't I don't think sports medicine people necessarily go to med school, right? They don't get their eight year doctorate, do they? I think they're probably more like physical therapists or like it's like huh. eat, eat protein powder and do a push up. That's what they learn. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's a trainer. That's what yeah, that's what that is. is right. It? Sports medicine is like just fucking training and being a coach. Well, normally what we have here is just like heart doctors. They usually take care of, of the athletes and, and shit, you know? Well, they're things. not doing a good job because uh, lots of young athletes are uh, dying at the age of 18, 19, 20, and we don't know why. Well, mm. that's always been the case because being an athlete is fucking hard. And they push it has not like always hard. been the case, but... Yeah, it, it actually has. It's always uh, been the case. It's just ha- popping up in my news feed five times a week now for no reason. Yeah, we didn't care about it 10 years ago. Yeah, because you're an insane anti-vaxxer and you're going to get... Whoa, like, who brought up the vax what? but you, Florian? I'm just curious why all these young, athletic, physically fit people are dropping dead. Yeah, it's real bizarre how all this news finds a way to you, isn't it? Just something hey, about you. I Must guess so. this news. Uh, yeah, it's my fault that Weird. my feed looks like that. Yeah, I mean... If you if you just search for like is the Earth flat, you're gonna get so many news stories where it's like, oh, this guy said something that doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, what a coincidence! So we all agree it makes sense that Jesse would want to study sports medicine. Is that what we're trying to say? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it'll be way too hard. He'd have to be a whole doctor, but I don't know. Hartsy, Hartsy, what career do you think Jesse should go into? Uh, probably not meth dealing. Uh, that's a good one. Um. It's pretty lucrative. Know. Maybe he should t- uh, start a podcast about his criminal experience. I get, I bet mm. that would get a lot of viewers. Yeah, Jesse would be a good podcaster. I'd listen to that. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. He could review every episode of Breaking Bad. Yeah. I guess it, it'd be pretty tough to, to wonder what Jesse could possibly work on, because he, he is so, so fucking stupid, like, so often. Like, which jobs would he not blow? Hmm. Jesse's not the type of guy who needs to go to college. And in fact, college is a scam at this point, and none of you listening should go. Heartsey, don't even bother. Yeah, I'm Uh, so surprised. What's Walt even thinking? Like, yeah, college, that's worked out really well for you, hasn't it? Yeah, he's a fucking, like, underpaid high school chemistry (laughs) teacher. Like, oh, I bet your college degree worked out great, Walt. Yeah. Look what it got you, you, fucking nothing. But if you already have the money, like, why would you put yourself through college? That would not be worth your time. Because you want to give a university half a million dollars? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess he's got that money, just about. Okay, some other lore drops. We find out from the radio that Lydia is currently still alive. She's not expected to live through the poisoning, but there is a chance. So I choose to believe in my little, uh, what is it, uh, Schrodinger's cat or whatever the fuck. Uh, Mm -hmm. In my world, Lydia survives the poisoning and goes on to be the ultimate waifu for the rest of her life. Lydia's dead as Disco. She's gonna knock yeah, her fucking head. They, they could have said she's dead. She was the final victim of Heisenberg, but they <laughs> left the door open and said she might live. So fuck you guys. I'm right. I mean, mm-hmm. like, what does it matter? It's not like they're gonna make a Lydia episode. Because she's hot <laughs> as fuck, and, and hot women should not die early, Florian. <laughs> I, I, I have know, morals. I I, I think she deserves it for how she handled no. Heisenberg, you know? For how she treated Mike? That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Mike. Pretty rude to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're all sexist. She, she definitely deserved to die. Hmm. Do we have any thoughts on the opening scene with Mike? Standing at basically in the same spot where he's going to die. Look. I don't like when they do shit like this. It's like it's fucking so poetry, it rhymes type bullshit, where it's like, oh, because we know that's where he dies, we're gonna, like, set this scene up in a similar place. Stop it. Don't do that shit. Fucking find another place that he... I don't think Mike is fucking hanging out, like, on the side of fucking streams or whatever. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. Maybe he's a but fisherman. It, I don't remember. That might have been brought up. What, it's what he would have wanted, okay? He, he dragged himself to that stream as he was dying, you know? He could have just... Stayed up there where he was, but no. He, he could have stayed with the dangerous gunmen trying to kill him, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Oh, he knew he was dead. Come on. <laughs> Shut up and let uh, me die in peace, Walter. Mm -mm -mm. It, Walter. Yeah. I really hate that scene, though, by the way, the, the, the river scene where in, in El Camino, it's just like, oh, hey, Jesse, where, where, no, I mean, hey, hey, Mike, where do you think I should go when I retire from the world? <laughs> where should I go at the end of Breaking Bad, Mike? <laughs> it's like, wow, I know, cool. Jesse. I, I love I'm going to die in this exact same spot in a couple <laughs> days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the idea of like, oh, Fucking Jesse, so goddamn stupid. He can't even pick a place to go now. <laughs> now, now, cause the random fucking bullshit that Mike said. Yeah, okay. Now we're gonna live in in fucking Alaska where it's always cold. What a what a great choice, Jesse. Now, did they clarify if uh, Robert Forrester, the the vacuum guy, lets you pick where you go? Cause I feel like it's been inconsistent. Yeah, I, th well, I feel like we've heard Jesse talking about Alaska before, right? So it's make yeah. it seem like this is his choice as to where he wants to go. Hmm. Right, but like Walt didn't pick a log cabin in New Hampshire, did he? Well, mm -hmm. Walt was extremely hot, so he had to he had fewer choices. He had to just take what he could get. Yeah, I mean, like every it was probably is him. if the law knows about you and is down you have fewer opportunities as to where you're gonna go so saul goodman specifically chose to go to uh uh kim's hometown of omaha mm -hmm. well her hometown is nearby omaha not okay omaha nebraska okay whatever uh well. and one other piece of lore or i guess not really lore but i guess an easter egg uh, does anybody else think the dumbest thing in the movie is that <laughs> Todd lives on Holly Avenue? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? It, it's too cute. The A fuck? What is the point cute. of that? <laughs> Why? Because he breaks into the house and threatens Holly? Like, what the fuck are you thinking? It's dumb. It's just them like going, hey, there's a name like that. Uh, there's a Holly Avenue in Albuquerque. Let's fucking film it and put it in the movie. Mm. <laughs> An angry growl. <laughs> yeah, that, that no, it's not well, angry. No just pieces. disappointed. Yeah, disgusted. <laughs> I think it's to suddenly imply that Holly will become a very important character in later series. That she will rise up and be the next Heisenberg. No, no, no. Lydia's the next Heisenberg. Holly's going to be her Jesse, and that's the show I want to watch. And it's called Sexy Old Lady and Holly. I'd watch it. Wow. <laughs> Don't give me a wow on that. She doesn't even have, I mean, she still has her own daughter. Fuck that daughter. She, she could be a meth kingpin. She doesn't need those Walter White jeans to be great. Hmm. Just remember how sexy Lydia looked all pale and sickly in bed? Like, what if she has permanent damage <laughs> from the poison and she's, like, always super pale now? Oh. Oh. Yeah, wow. Just brain damage, too? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> That's how I like them, pale and brain damaged. You want to fucking phantom thread Lydia. You yes! Get her sick and then take care of her, nurse her back to health, and then when she gets too uppity, you poison her again yeah, and make start her sick. Putting it back in the wow. soup. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that they did this to Todd, okay? Todd was a reasonable character, and then we, we just gotta include a fucking scene where, where he drags Jesse to bury his dead housekeeper. Come on. It's like, wow. Mm. I guess we accidentally made the Nazis too sympathetic. Here, let's hmm. show them killing some more babies. <laughs> now, at what point did you find them sympathetic? Well, I, I thought Top was great all along. Damn. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> 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 I have to I think, think about Todd, that one. Todd is the one ace up their sleeve for this movie that they do have, and they do get some mileage out of. Just seeing his house, seeing how he lives, seeing his entire... Uh, deal here is is pretty fun, but I, I feel like there was a lack of dedication to the film like t Todd's actor could not be bothered to lose the 50 pounds that he gained uh, And Brian Cranston is wearing a very obvious <laughs> Bald cap that makes his head fucking look ginormous <laughs> so like, it really this, is hilarious how obvious <laughs> shit is. If this was like a real theatrical film and not fucking straight to Netflix slop, do you think these people would have taken it more seriously? I mean, I'm I don't know, because sure. I think it had a $6 sure million dollar budget, which doesn't seem 
like for two hours doesn't really seem that much so they were probably on a pretty shoestring operation like i'm trying to think the fucking breaking bad show was probably run for much much less but this doesn't look much better it doesn't really like i don't know i don't know what they spent the money on if so yeah, there's almost nothing visually to it, right? It's like half the shit is happening at night and... No. Yeah? I'll disagree there. I think visually it's a really good looking movie. I think um, uh, the montage of Jesse searching the apartment is one of the best scenes in Breaking Bad history. Oh yeah, John Wick 4 uh, ripped John off this movie. Wow. That, that overhead shot when it shows like a time lapse of eight different Jessies searching the apartment, <laughs> that looked amazing. I mean, yeah. what I'm saying is it's, like, that's still, like, one apartment, so, like, it wouldn't be very expensive. I mean, sure, that scene was great, but but other than that, right, it wasn't it wasn't anything too impressive, no. right? There's a good handful of shots and sequences I think are really well done in the movie. I th another one is uh, when Jesse says, I'm no cop killer, and you see the gun slowly poking out of the darkness. That's a really good shot. When Jesse blows up the welding store, uh, it's basically a bigger explosion than anything in Oppenheimer. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> yep. But back to Todd's apartment, uh, there are a few fun Easter eggs in here. Of course, uh, Spider Bro, the, the the spider that the dirt bike kid found is Todd kept it as a pet and has it in a little aquarium. Uh, he has a snow globe with him and Lydia in it as little toy figurines. I thought that was just crazy. How did he even, like, who do you commission to make that? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Could it, could it be expensive? Could it be cheap? Who knows? I would love to have a Todd and Lydia snow globe, so if anybody <laughs> wants to hook me up in my P.O. box... <laughs> wow. Ask Vince where that prop went. I'm sure he still has it. Yeah, I'll buy it on eBay. Yeah, for $5,000. Hmm. Uh, I've got a few other things I want to cover, but I want to open it back up to you guys. Is, is there anything from this film that you're dying to like, chat about? Heartsy. Heartsy. Let's uh, assume that, yeah. like, okay, so I don't think it was a million dollars an episode for every episode of Breaking Bad. So let's say, like, $500,000 to $750,000. Do you think that, like, El Camino looks eight times as good as, like, generally Breaking Bad does? I mean, I wouldn't say that, but I would say it's significantly uh, improved. I would say it's about on par with the cinematography and visual look of later Better Call Saul seasons. Hmm. Okay. And they probably had to pay the actors a lot more to come back, which is why I'm even more angry that they didn't dedicate themselves to the role and, and try to look <laughs> like their characters again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I Hey, I would have not, not like I can't I can't believe you're saying this. Like you're expecting Todd to lose fifty pounds for a fucking movie where he where he killed the like the poor immigrant woman off screen, really? And then he he forced Jesse to to bury her. Like why would he do that? Like uh, because he's an actor and he that's his literal job. I mean, they they can't make him lose weight, no. I mean, all the greatest actors in history gain and lose weight for roles all the time. Yeah, look at Christian Bale. He's fucking on either side of 300 pounds. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal did Nightcrawler <laughs> and uh, Southpaw like in the same year. That shit's mm -hmm. fucking crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know why you're expecting El Camino to, to get this same of the same kind of attention from. Because I have very like. basic standards, Florian. <laughs> The, uh, the lowest they, they bar should... is just try to look the same as you did during the time period that the character would have been in. I well, might they, have... they should have written the script better if they wanted better performances, okay? I agree. I might there have rose go. tinted glasses because this was the first uh, Breaking Bad production I was able to watch as it come, came out. Because season five was already out when I was nine, and that's when I started watching it. I was <laughs> nine when I watched the series. <laughs> then years later, this movie that continues the Breaking Bad story came out when I was in like eighth grade, I'd like to say. And I remember I had a teacher who was a huge Breaking Bad fan, and we talked about this movie for weeks until it came out. And I was super mm -hmm. excited for it. And uh, I think I'm just still like in that mindset of, oh boy, this is the first Breaking Bad product I get to watch as it drops. I remember staying up and refreshing Netflix until it was live to watch. Uh, and I have fond memories of that. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was pretty hyped for the movie as well. I think that's why most of us felt underwhelmed by just the lack of really closure or interesting things happening. But I guess on my fifth viewing here, I can appreciate it for what it is. I, I gave it three and a half stars on Letterboxd, but uh, I'm ready to never watch it again. That's a little stars for this kind of movie. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, um, as, as its I, own film, it's it's not terrible. It's just, like, as the end of Breaking Bad, I don't like it. I mean, I, I like, there's no characters in it that I care about. I don't, well, I don't you must know, have they... missed out on yeah. Skinny Pete and Badger, which I really want us to talk about. But, Erich, what were you about to say? <laughs> yeah, I do like the, like, two fake cops uh, characters who, like, kind of seem like they want to be badasses but aren't. Uh, the guy who challenges Des Jesse to a shootout and then gets fucking murked by him is pretty fucking funny. I, I feel like he has like kind of a grudge against Jesse as soon as Jesse gets the uh, the upper hand on him and takes some money. So he, he's like wanting to get his revenge and then he gets fucking. Well, no, he, he's the guy who who welded him into into that. No, cage, I know, right? I know. Yeah. Well, so he, he didn't have a grudge. He just thought that that he actually had to kill Jesse because he would keep coming for him. But that was actually quite tragically wrong, because Jesse would have just left for those 2,000 bucks. I love Jesse's gambit that he secretly has a second gun in his pocket, and he just shoots him mm -hmm. through his pocket. Yeah, yep. he just shows, like, the worst gun, and he's gonna duel him with that, but uh-oh, a powerful gun hidden away. <laughs> I guess what I learned from watching this movie is that Jesse is not an interesting enough character to kind of... Uh, contain his own story in this era of the character so i just kind of don't give a shit for the most part right this is very much a, a ptsd movie and he's just struggling with having been tortured for about a year and we keep seeing mm -hmm. flashbacks like when he's getting hosed down so now when he showers he's you know terrified of just the water pouring on him and yeah, it's hard to watch a two hour movie about somebody just grieving and going through PTSD. Like all the things we like about Jesse are his humor and his like cheerful attitude in the early seasons. And that character right. is dead. Yeah. I want a movie about Jesse like in season one and two era. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Just him ripping off vaults and keeping the money, but then, oh, good thing he's still got the RV anyways. That kind of character, wow. Because he was making meth before he met Walt anyway. Let's get, like, a little adventure of the, the Chili P master. <laughs> yeah, surprised that wasn't in, 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 in Better Call Saul. That would have fit right in, you know? He, he's even used him before. Yeah, you know how Saul Goodman has like his little box of uh, keepsakes of things that remind him of his old life. Do we think that up in Alaska, Jesse like has a little thing of chili powder <laughs> in his uh, memory chest? Possibly. Right. He's just getting PTSD every time he sees chili powder. <laughs> <laughs> no, it reminds him of a better time before he hooked up with Mr. White. Yeah, well, he's well, out fucking the neighbor woman when when the the FBI is raiding the. That's right, and she <laughs> st stands in the window with her full titties on display, and we never <laughs> see titties again. Yep, uh, she just can't believe her eyes, you know. <laughs> Doesn't even cover up. I like that Jesse says "fuck" in this movie more than the rest of Breaking Bad combined. <laughs> That's pretty good. I feel like how, how did they say "fuck off" and in Better Call Saul? Uh. Yeah, when, when Chuck said, uh, Jimmy, you motherfucker, I hate you. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I guess like the, the most disappointing thing is, is how the ending doesn't really have anything of Jesse like starting his new life. Instead, we just have the, the scene with, with Walt again, which is interesting. But like as a standalone movie, that scene isn't really adding that much. You know, it's just like a little slice of life from Breaking Bad. But but. Like if we had like 15 minutes of, of, of Jesse finding his new life, would that have made it better at the end of the movie? I think you are 100% right and that the scene with Walt is complete fan service and adds nothing to the narrative of this film. And if somebody disagrees, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear the argument for it. I mean, you would say, Carson, you're up. <laughs> you would say that it doesn't work in the context of it being a standalone movie, but it's not made for that. It's They never intended it to be like a standalone movie experience. It's a movie for... Breaking Bad fans to continue the Breaking Bad story. Well, the, 
the point is that you're not getting a satisfying ending to neither this movie nor nor anything else, so... And what are we like, learning from this scene other than Jesse has a weird college idea and that, I guess, the new side of Walt's character is that he feels like what they're doing is special and that he missed out over the course of his life, but that's pretty much inferred throughout the entirety of the show anyway. I mean, yeah, but it's nice to hear him say it, you know? Is it? It's actually more cringe than you'd think, because, like, mm-hmm. we know that he's he's doing it for, for some reason, but then the reason is just to make him feel special? Are you kidding me? Are you, like, a, a teenager now, Walt? And and you've you founded a, a billion dollar company. Oh, but but this is so special. Oh, I sure love driving through the desert, having a a, a comedy of errors where <laughs> where Jesse loses the key. You know, it's that's <laughs> something special right here. Yeah, we we ate funyuns and cranked a fucking engine for ten fucking hours. Oh, we made one point two million dollars worth of meth. What a special thing episode, we did. By the way. Great episode for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can we talk about the two best characters? Sure. So, Skinny Pete and Badger, they go above and beyond, and I'm convinced these are the two greatest friends in cinematic history. The way that they take care of and shelter their friend who is like, there's a nationwide police manhunt for him and they'll do anything to protect him. They, all three of them, like, trade cars with each other just to trick the police and let Jesse escape. Uh, it... I was like almost, you know, uh, an emotional uh, core was hit with seeing these great friends on screen. And I'm curious for all three of you, if one of your friends was was in a similar situation, would you have done the same for them? It depends what I get out of it. No. Nothing. You literally lose all of your money it's and your car. Me. And you're at risk of abating uh, and abetting <laughs> or whatever of a fucking criminal. Yeah, absolutely Honestly. not. No, if if no. if I I got anyone who's like wanted for for a crime, I'm, there's no fucking way I'm sheltering them. Okay, so I'm not <laughs> gonna go to nice. Florian's when I'm in trouble. What about you, Ivich? Yeah, but when when you're discovered, yeah, you can stay a, with me and I'll help you out. Whatever. Ivich is gonna immediately call the police. He's right here. He's in my bedroom. Please get over here. <laughs> it's not, it's not a single Why would I tell you that? I'm not gonna fucking reveal that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your trump card. <laughs> now, because we got into this argument on the Trash Rats podcast, and it was basically the idea of uh, Rusty Cage, if Aggie hit somebody with his car, would you let him hide the car in your backyard? And Rusty said, <laughs> fuck no. And no. you know, I just feel like I care about my friends more than I care about their crimes. And if somebody mm-hmm. was in need and came knocking on my door, I would do anything to help them if they're one of my good friends. Well, you mean you, you don't really care that much about yourself, right? Like, you, you'd be fine if, if something horrible happened to you? I don't think my friend is going to do something bad to me if they're coming to me for help. No, I mean, you'd get arrested, like... Uh, we don't know uh, Badger and Skinny Pete's fate, and I have to assume, much like Lydia, they do uh, go on to prosper. Yeah. <laughs> no way, there's no more Band of Call Saul. They're going to they're gonna have the books thrown at them. <laughs> What about you, Hartsey? If I uh, start a meth empire and the cops are after me, will you let me hide out in your uh, whatever you live in? I, uh, yeah, whatever I live in, the uh, my hospital room, of course, because I'm uh, in the <laughs> hospital and I'm recovering from an accident. Right. But, uh, but maybe, maybe. There's not many people that I know that I genuinely would consider putting, putting all that online for. There's like maybe two or three that I know personally that I would probably do that for. Other than that, probably not. Well, I'm just going to put it out there. If either of you three get into hot water and need a place to be on the lamb, you can come to me and I'll keep your secret. Awesome. Wow. Good to know. It's called being a good friend, Florian. Wow, thank you. I, Did you guys not agree that Badger and Skinny Pete are just like phenomenal in this film? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you not well, inspired to be more like them? Not really. Well, it, God damn it. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool how how they act, you know. But like all this time, they're still so fucking stupid. So I'm I'm like, they they probably just don't understand what they're doing, you know. But they are pretty know, much they, smoking pot twenty four seven. So exactly. yeah, they're they're, they, they're kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, they're they're so out entirely. They don't even they don't even know right from wrong, you know. But the quote of the movie for me is Jesse says, "Skinny Pete, why are you doing this?" And he says, "Dude, you're my hero and shit." And I, I just thought that was so beautiful. 
I was about to bring that up. Many people see that and they're like, "Oh, that's so sweet." And I just thought it was kind of, it was kind of gross and icky and like cringe. Yeah, yeah. He, your hero is someone who makes really good math because he get like to get high. Are you serious? I mean, they've all they all <laughs> did that before the show even started. And Jesse went on to become the greatest of all time, as far as the news is concerned. So you know, that's kind of heroic. He went to the top of their field. I assumed they were just customers, right? No, they worked with them the whole time. Well, they, I mean, yeah, but like originally they were, were they peddling meth or, or whatever? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know they, they started in the show, but yeah, I guess that makes sense. Hmm. Wow, that, that's still stupid. Though. There's nothing cringe about considering your friends to also be your heroes, okay? Uh, personally, Aggie <laughs> is a hero of mine, and I feel honored that he even spends time with me at all. So I would say and do the same for him. <laughs> I, I don't know. If, if I worked as a mess dealer, I would not lock up to other mess dealers. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how you... How you can talk this one up. <laughs> but what if you were friends with somebody who made a, a frog ball game and it went, you know, multi-platinum? Would you not tell your friend, you're my hero? I mean, yeah. But there you, now you understand. <laughs> That's yeah, all man. it takes. I'm always bragging about I mean, how I'm friends with the creator of Ball Frog and that he's my hero. Yeah. Like, all the time. And if I played shitty video games, I would probably feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, instead you, you just do drugs, and that's why you like Jesse. And yeah, because I do meth so all day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Erich, would you rather do meth or heroin? Mm, I'm going to say meth. I feel like meth is not as addictive as hmm. heroin. I feel like meth kind of makes you go loco, and heroin is uh, is always described as like a tight, warm blanket of love and peace. So I might want to go for that one. Man, it's good you didn't ask me, because I have no fucking idea what any drug does, like, no, not I would, even remotely. I would never touch an illicit substance in my entire life, ever, <laughs> but if I had to True. pick one, I would probably pick meth. Like, I will never even, like, touch weed in my life, so, like, that's how straight edge I am. Like, <laughs> Just straight to the meth. It's probably, <laughs> probably for the best, Artsy. Yeah. Like, you're sick in the head enough when you're sober, I don't want to see what... The, the paranoia oh, of weed I'm would do sick to you. In my head. Yeah, uh, you mean <laughs> in, extremely intelligent. Uh, go read. If you think Hartsy's not sick in the head, go read his Twitter feed for God's sakes. <laughs> I have Jesus. an IQ of 125. Man. Look at I'm his pretty, replies. Yeah, but I ignorance is bliss, and you're so smart. That's why you're miserable, Hartsy. That's the point. Exactly. And, and weed like, would only magnify that that anxiety and, and paranoia you feel. Yeah, my I, intellect I, makes me mad. I'm it, sorry, literally, Hartsy, yes. But, Nobody who's ever been smart has quoted their IQ, okay? You're, you're being ridiculous. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't Walt say what his IQ is at some point? Maybe yeah, not. Yeah, and he's a fucking idiot! Hmm... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually don't think he does. Vince Gilligan said that Walt is the smartest in the Breaking Bad universe. I mean... Yeah, so clearly I'm, uh, I have good company. And Vince also <laughs> said that Todd lives on Holly Avenue, so everything he says is <laughs> very educated and good. Best. Uh, do we have so, anything else from this great film? Well, I wish that... I mean, you, you really like Skinny Pete and Bancher. Uh, I think Specifically in this movie. Uh, yeah. I think th like this redeems their characters, and also I guess in the finale of Breaking Bad when they are the the greatest snipers west of the Mississippi or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they they should have, but at least we should have seen them some 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 more times. We should have seen what happens to them. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm expecting like too many different things from the ending of this movie, but like. Like, if, if we are supposed to care about any of the characters, then they should have shown up, like, more than, more than like, one time in the movie, right? Oh, they're in the movie for about half an hour. That's yeah, pretty but good. Still, I mean, I, I think they, they should still return, you know, at the end. I something. would like to think that once Jesse is settled down in Alaska, he'll remember the two most loyal friends anybody's ever had and somehow contact them. Uh, I don't know how, because it's probably, you know, phones being tapped and whatnot, but <laughs> I, I'd like to think there's a future for this Three Musketeers. You know, they'll play games online with each other. Who knows? Yeah, that'd be cool. Play whatever, because they're always playing games together anyway. I don't know how he was contact. Discovery. 
I don't know how he'll contact his two loyal friends if if Walt and Mike are dead. <laughs> uh, get a Ouija board? <laughs> Look, he already used his one wish to contact Brock, okay? Who knows what he told Brock, you know? And that's all. That's the only contact he has to his, his, his life that he's left behind. And now he's a new man mining oil in Alaska, you know? Yeah, what do we think that the letter written to Brock could possibly say? <laughs> hey, little original... bro. Sorry how everything shook out. <laughs> sorry on I got your mom killed. <laughs> well, on my way to Alaska, oops, shouldn't have written that. Uh, please don't tell anyone. Sign I, Jesse. I should start over, but this is my only piece of paper. Oops. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm running out of space. Shit. Uh... <laughs> he writes out. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's like a, that's what uh, Todd and in uh, Bojack Horseman would do. Yeah, absolutely. The original uh, cut it's ending fun. of the movie is actually a um, voiceover of Jesse reading the letter to uh, Brock, but it was cut. And is that true? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Do we know what he said? Well no, we do not know oh, what no. the letter said, but we do know no. that the scene of him reading it exists. What is the opposite of Bravo? Because I'd like to say that to Vince right now. Boo Vince. Boo Vince. Boo Earns. <laughs> I mean, that would have definitely been more interesting, but still not, not as satisfying as seeing what, what Jesse does now. Hmm. I was saying Boo Earns. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> That's Mon's Mole Man, dude. <laughs> wow. I love Mole Man, dude. Uh, another scene I love from this movie is uh, they're burying the Mexican maid, and Todd says, Hey, Jesse, uh, go to my glove compartment and do not grab the gun. And Jesse grabs the gun. <laughs> and then, like, Meth Damon, or Fat Damon, as we'll call him, has to talk Jesse out of shooting him to death. And he says, uh, Well, Jesse, I was going to get us some pizza and beer. Here. Do you like pizza, Jesse? And like, <laughs> like, like tears are, are going down his eyes as he says, I like pepperoni pizza. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Wow. He, he could have had freedom there, too. That was so stupid. Fuck me. Like, yeah. I, I'm thinking, like, I, I didn't question it before, but now, like, nobody knows you're out there. Just kill Todd, rescue Brock, and get the fuck out of the, the fucking place. Jesus, yeah, it was why especially did... a weird creative decision to have a cartoon thought bubble appear over his head with a pizza in it, and then be like, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> he's like, "Well, if I kill him, if I kill him now, I won't get any pizza, so I better give him back the gun." There's yeah. no way I could achieve pizza by myself. <laughs> uh, anything else we're missing, uh, other than Fat Damon uh, makes himself a bowl of bean and bacon soup. And I have to imagine that's how he got fat, was eating nothing but Americone Dream ice cream and fucking bean and bacon soup. <laughs> hey, hey, don't knock him too, try it. Oh, there's one other thing. Um, so Todd is like, as he's driving down the, the highway to go bury this body, he's so carefree singing to the music. Uh, and he's driving so slow that a fucking semi truck passes him in a no passing zone. Uh, I thought that was a pretty funny detail to put in there. Yeah. Wow. I, I like how the how the people who, who well the, the construction workers or whatever, the welding company, how I, I like how they how they hired hookers, you know? And, and they were so disgusting. Relatable the scenes. Hookers, <laughs> the, the hookers never want to come back there again. Yeah. Yeah. Extra awesome relatable. relatable. <laughs> 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 Why didn't the welders call them sugar babies? <laughs> yeah, weird, huh? <laughs> that, that would be too high class for them. That's why. Yeah. Which of the three hookers would you have picked, Florian? The black one. The blonde one. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Racist. Wow. Uh, the Austrian wants the blonde hair, blue eyed woman, huh? Typical. Uh, Tales old as time. Mm -hmm. At least 80 years old. Wow. I'm not even. Hmm. Aryan. Hmm. Not yet. <laughs> wow, the yeah, surgery's yeah, I'll, coming. I'll <laughs> I'm gonna get wow. you the genetic enhancement. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> this is what we're stuck talking about now with the El Camino review. I'll finally get my, my Iron Sky syringe, you know, that turns me fully white. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> no, I get it. I know all about Iron Sky. Even yep. if they didn't vote for it in the poll, I know all about it, Florian. Hell yeah. <laughs>
So that's a good movie. <laughs> Uh, any final thoughts on the final episode of the Breaking Bad rewatch podcast? Rated oh, yeah, R. The, the guy who crushes the cars. He was he was so friendly. Oh, and he he made references to magnets. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's right, homeboy Joe. And then he gets he, spooked and runs away. Well, he was right. He he told them that they would get arrested. Not a real friend like Badger and Skinny Pete. He abandons <laughs> Jesse in his time of need. So well, they so would have definitely this, gotten caught without him. When this movie came out, I watched it with some friends who had all watched Breaking Bad, and we we enjoyed it. I think pretty pretty well. Um, it was something that I had really wanted to see, and I was really happy with it at the time. And now going back to it, I am less happy with it and less happy with Breaking Bad overall. Even though I think it's a whoa, really good show. whoa, what? Wait, this I movie just, made just... you hate Breaking Bad? No, 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 no. I mean, like, or just this just podcast. After all these years, so, yeah, and doing this podcast made this well, like. Well, that's Breaking disappointing Bad. because like, Breaking Bad is among the best things ever, and, and you just you just can't handle watching a show more than once without losing interest. Well, no, I want to hear you, Rich, talk about this. Was it Hartsy's opinions that soured you on the show? Yeah. It's less Hartsy and more Breaking Bad fans who were very zealous about the show. Yeah, Hartsy. Very okay. like wanting to say it's the best thing ever. Hard I don't see. think it's the best thing ever. Nah. <laughs> it's it's even... one of the better shows of the last, like, decade or whatever, but I wouldn't say it's the I best. I mean, that, that's pretty high praise normally, isn't it? It's almost I certainly the best show that premiered in 2008. <laughs> yeah, okay, we, we got Men premiere in 2008. <laughs> wow. Wait, what else came out then? I was gonna say. Oh wait, Mad Men was two thousand seven. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, we, we we gotta we gotta figure this out. How how highly would you rate Breaking Bad? Is it better than Sopranos? It's like a nine out of it, ten. It, yeah. it might not be in my top ten. Whoa. <laughs> what? Okay, E. Rich, let's hear your top five. I I'd have to I'd have to think about it. But in no particular order, just list off the shows would, better than Breaking right, Bad. Would definitely include in my top five. The Leftovers, okay. Um, Sopranos, okay. Um, oh, the what? Wire, okay. Sopranos uh, over over Breaking Bad, no way. Yeah, so that's Insane. three. Uh, fucking One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> One Piece isn't over yet, so I can't. I'm not gonna lie. The ending, you know, uh, the juice it, is worth the squeeze. It, the anime, notwithstanding, I would say I probably enjoy One Piece more than Breaking Bad as a whole. Mm hmm. Wow. That, that's I know that I like other shows more than Breaking Bad. They're just not coming to mind. Better Call Saul's better than Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, totally. well, at least I mean, okay. I I kind of would still credit Breaking Bad for Better Call Saul, but okay. Mad about, Men, I probably like more than Breaking Bad. You like the Expanse more than Breaking yeah, Bad? Yeah, probably. What? <laughs> but that's like. But it's like, yeah, it, it, insane, okay, heavy. here's the thing about people's favorite shit, is that, like, there's certain things that appeal to me more than, like, a drug empire, like, uh, show. Even if the performances aren't as strong in other shows as in Breaking Bad, there's things that appeal to me more, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna like those things more. Oh, come on, dude. That, that, that's ridiculous. That, like, nobody cares about drug empire shows, it's just that Breaking Bad is that good. Uh, there's another drug empire show I like called Ozark, and that's like my second favorite drug empire show. Mm. I heard that show has mm. a bad ending. I mean, that, that one's definitely like the second one after Breaking Bad, yeah. What about Weeds? Uh, Narcos. Weeds has a super sexy lady in it. What's her name? I have seen it. I yeah, mean, neither, but I know that the actress, I think, is attractive. <laughs> is it Mary, Mary Louise Parker? Is that who you're talking about? Probably, yeah. Yeah, she's pretty I, I hot for I being a little older. I think I died of cringe within the first 10 minutes of watching that. I've never seen one second of that show, so... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, oh, I would say I like The Bear so far more. What?! Uh, what is Bad. The yeah. Bear?! You can't yeah, like The I Bear would. more than Breaking Bad, it's barely what even a fuck? show! No. What is that show? Because I've seen advertisements for it. It's it's a guy who says, oh, customers are coming to my restaurant. I'm literally going insane. <laughs> no, stop ordering food. I have to cook it. No. Oh, Succession. Succession. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Uh, mm, yeah, I might like Succession more than Breaking Bad. <laughs> All right. I got him. But, but Breaking Bad's better than Barry, and I'm going to 
keep that forever. I, I would overall sure. agree with that. Okay. Because I think Barry has very high highs, but I think like it's kind of all over the place at times. I only got to season two and then dropped off. I might continue. Well, hey, since Rip. Florian quit watching Succession, should we do a rewatch of that and just not have him be in the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Well, I mean, if you're doing a rewatch, I can probably. Uh, nope, you're not invited. Along. You said you don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I've already seen. It. Well, okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna torture you with the greatest show ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it was pretty slow the first time. Jesus. Boo hoo! Yeah. Fucking low IQ <laughs> take. <laughs> uh, succession's Boy, too slow. To see it or not? Mm. It's not fucking slow. Yeah, okay. It's, it's not, not fucking slow. You want to see uh, slow? Go watch Mad Men, motherfucker. Go watch The Sopranos. This is, uh, Succession is not slow. Mm. Uh, I saw Sopranos is- Bear Call Saul because the first season's too slow. Uh. Well, Sopranos is- <laughs> Well, I watched like two seasons. Come on. Like, Sopranos is definitely not slow. Wait, I mean, it's a little slow, but it's not slower than Succession. I mean, it's got like 200 fucking episodes. You know, it's a. Yeah, but it takes a long happens. time to get through. Succession's pretty quick. Yeah. I'm, I mean, there's not that much that happens in Succession, though. How would you know? You've only watched like five episodes. <laughs> I've watched two seasons. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> Imagine watching the season two finale and saying, "Nah, this isn't for me." Like, what the fuck? <laughs> What, what yeah, happens to that? Exactly. Maybe I didn't I see that say, part yet. It's not worth responding to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, should we seriously consider doing another rewatch type of podcast, or should we maybe take a long break before we consider that? Should we have a poll to let the audience vote for what they want? Uh, give me your maybe ideas. We should, maybe we should watch a new show that we haven't I seen. I think we should before. do The Wire. <laughs> I have seen The Wire, but I heard it's good. That. Uh, we could do the wire. I mean, should we do a poll of like the wire succession? Uh, yeah. Not better call Saul. I'm kind of done with this uh, mm-hmm. universe for a bit. Yeah. So, like, just like a poll of a bunch of highly acclaimed dramas and uh, let them choose which one we watch. Velma. <laughs> Rewatch I know, Velma. We're already doing a Velma no matter what. Velma. You're fucking waste a poll by putting a Velma on there with a bunch of others. <laughs> Velma, <laughs> She Hulk, uh, the new Superman show. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty good. I bet. <laughs> well, what? boys, we're hitting about an hour. This might be the end of Breaking Bad as we know it. Do we have any final, final thoughts? Hmm. <laughs> Heartsy, what, what does this show mean to you? Uh, the real bads <laughs> were the ones we broke along the way. Okay. That's a fair final thought. Man, was that salad any good with all those pineapples in it? Hmm. After four days of starving? (laughs) Yeah, I guess. It's it's got bromine or whatever. He's eating eating like, he's fisting into his mouth pieces of lettuce and pineapple. (laughs) Yeah, what what sauce even goes with that? Jesus. (laughs) Yeah, imagine ranch on pineapple. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about that one. That's going on the next Wheel of Cursed Meals. Jesse salad. Yeah, you. the Jesse salad. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna look carefully at all the things he puts on. It's gonna be the most expensive thing. Yeah, and he's like reaching into the salad bar with his hands instead of tongs. The pig <laughs> special. And then he's like, yeah, bitch. Like in front of everyone. <laughs> Would you really give somebody $5 to keep a pitcher of water? For fuck's sake, just wait for the refill. <laughs> Well, he's, he's had a whole wad of cash, you know? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> E-Rich, final thought, and then we'll do plugs and get out of here. Is this over the whole entire thing? Yeah, this, yeah, why not? This, this thing. Um, yeah, Breaking Bad is a very good show. I think it's well-realized. I think Vince Gilligan has spent a lot of time in the TV business, and this will probably always be his crowning achievement uh, for, for televisual entertainment. Um, I think the, like, overall legacy of this thing is going to be incredibly huge in the like the mainstream pop culture and it's probably for the better overall though i don't think it's as perfect as a lot of people claim it to be so i think if vince can make an even better show because he's doing that new show with ray seahorn i might never Mm -hmm. stop ejaculating (laughs) wow okay so 
Uh, I, I think that Breaking Bad is incredibly good. I think that all the all the other crime stuff that comes afterwards is just like a, a, a fairly boring copy because if you go back to the original Breaking Bad, it, it, it just has so much good shit in it that, that you probably forgot about, you know? I, I rewatch Breaking Bad every once in a while and I mean, this time I got a little tired of it, but in general, it's 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 it's, a, it's such a wild ride, and if you're able to binge it, it's great. So don't don't miss out on Breaking Bad. I've said this probably on every episode of this rewatch podcast, and I've said it four times in the last hour. But uh, you know, this is probably my eighth or ninth time going through the series myself. And I am ready to move on and probably yeah. never watch it again. Like I, I That's what I want to fucking tell people. Watch yeah. other things. Right. Fucking Heartsy, watch other things. I think you've done a better job oh, of doing that recently. Okay. Don't listen but, to them. Just because they've seen it a million times. You can all see it at no, least no. once. Heartsy has I've seen always... it like 15 times, though. Oh, no, yeah. No, I think if you rewatch times. it, if you rewatch it two or three times, you're probably fine. You can probably move on onto other things. I don't understand the mind that watches something 15 times well, when it's this long. This type of show, Star Wars though. Movies tons of times, but like that's a movie versus a show. Breaking Bad specifically is a lot of fun to show to people who have not seen it and to experience yeah, it mm-hmm. through them. So that's why you might rack up four or five rewatches. But I think, you know, after that, there, there's only so much uh, juice you can squeeze out of this lemon. And uh, <laughs> like, it, I, I'm ready to move on with my life and binge so many other shows. Heartsy, this entire podcast has been a, uh, oh, what is that called? When you intervention. Out there. I- intervention. It's been an intervention. You have to stop <laughs> rewatching. Breaking I've Bad. always okay. had a wide variety of taste when it comes to. I Star know Wars. that I know that we've done a poor job because we did this as a Breaking Bad rewatch <laughs> podcast. However, it should be said you have to stop rewatching Breaking Bad. All right. <laughs> Only one of my nine watchers have actually been with friends. The uh, eight other times, just me. Well, what know. about this one, though? You, you kind of watched it with friends because we all uh, talked yeah, about yeah. it. Okay, so mm-hmm. two of the nine, I guess. You're not going to do a tenth one starting next week. <laughs> don't, uh, don't fucking. Don't just to get that nice them. round number. <laughs> I'm going to wait at least a year. Just think yeah, about I, how I, hot Lydia is and you'll want to get to season five ASAP. Yeah, I course. think you guys will be, you'll come crawling back to Breaking Bad when you see how boring <laughs> other shows are. Okay? You'll wow. See, just, just give it a few years and you'll, you'll be craving some more of that. <laughs> I'm, math, you know? How boring I'm, other shows are? What do you mean? If we do The Wire, yeah. I'm going to really have to hold it out strong during season two to get you guys to, to oh, stick boy. with it. Yeah, I've also I, I not like seen The Wire. Although like, it what, does have what, Ziggy what, in it. You, probably, you guys will probably... With his giant penis. Whoa. <laughs> now, does The Wire feature any metaphors comparing black people to chess pieces? Because then I will watch it. Yes. Oh, shit! <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> ah, I guess that's what we're watching. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, because if we watch Succession, Florian won't be there. That might entice some voters. <laughs> oh, Look, the only... I, I would actually enjoy watching Succession. Jesus, if 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 I get that's to not what I heard. Talk about it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I won't enjoy watching it itself, but I enjoy <laughs> talking about it. You know. What so, a beautiful mind. Are we actually going to do a poll then with uh, the Wire, uh, Succession? Should we do Mad Men? Is that worth the well, discussion? Mad Men, yeah. Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I definitely think Mad Men is worth discussion. A good friend of mine have been pestering me to watch Mad Men for a year now, so. Okay. I okay. Time. Well, I just finished That's watching The Sopranos last shit. month, so I'm not ready for a Sopranos rewatch, especially when it's long okay. as fuck. Yeah, it is. I got it. Uh, uh, and I kind of just rewatched all of Succession right. before season four, so I don't like. I'm not dying to watch that immediately again either. But mm-hmm. but this podcast might not start till next year, for all we know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, what we do in the shadows? Boom. Fuck off. <laughs> You don't get a I fucking love that pick. Show. Although oh, I think yeah? it's fallen off in the last season, but you know. <laughs> well, this current season that's coming out right now. Yeah, I think it's gonna. Maybe it'll get better, but it's not. We really should uh, do a BoJack Horseman rewatch podcast. That'd be pretty. Uh... Yeah, be BoJack is another one that went on too long. Only if Toot then... is the guest star on every episode. <laughs> I literally <laughs> just said that to piss one specific person off. <laughs> 
If okay, I know I banned Toot from this channel, but if she will do a BoJack rewatch with us so we can hear all of her complaints, I might consider it. <laughs> Somebody tell her I said this because she's not listening to this shit. No, you can only bring her on in the last seasons. Otherwise, it'll be just she. She always says the same fucking shit. She, she's so fucking <laughs> stupid, man. You don't know what you're dealing with. I oh, know exactly God. what I'm fucking dealing with. <laughs> you're gonna lose subscriber. Well, yeah, that's a given. <laughs> uh, for the Breaking Bad Rewatch podcast, I've been Simeon P- Pinkman. Bye, everyone. Oh, wow. Nobody else gets a sign uh, off, well, huh? No. Uh, I was going to say, I'm Hartree Prodigy, and you can find me at Hartree Prodigy on YouTube. I haven't made content in a while because I'm recovering from an accident, but as soon as I'm up and walking, I'll be making content. Was the accident that you jerked off too much? What was the. Could no, be. it was a seven car pile up. Everybody yes. dead. <laughs> yep, everyone but me. Erich, where can people find you on X? Uh, yeah, you can find me at T Z A R R E V A on X and uh, on Blue Sky at Revan1138 if you have Blue Sky. What is Blue Sky? It's, it's a, a furry porn website. Ah. Oh, yeah, and it's primarily furry porn as well. When are you guys oh. going to post your letterbox reviews of El Camino? Uh, I have uh, a bunch of movies that I've seen that I need to review, so maybe to the- Well, I want ch- I want check out my my Barbie video. It's finally out. I'm sure everyone will love it. It's on my anti reviews channel. Link in the description. Bye everybody. Yeah. Bye bye.